Hey, it's Josephine from The Point Shop. I'm at Colorado Ballet today, and I'm hanging out with Emily, who is going to show us her point shoe hacks. Do you shape out your shoes differently? I do. So I have um, one arch that sits uh, more towards my heel than the other, and so that foot doesn't get as much of a shave, and this foot has a, it's a little bit more of my big foot where my arch sits. And so that one I shave closer so that it's um, when I'm on point and supports it better. Got it. And does it make it look a little bit more even between your left and your right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so everyone has different uh, different feet. So you can have one foot that is breaking a little bit higher or lower. lower. You can have a foot that's more flexible or more strong. Like, so it really depends. But you can customize your shoes differently so that you can actually even them out and they look a little bit different. See how she has... Um, the little writing there so she knows which one is the left and the right and she can also kind of see you can see how she shaved it differently so you can always do that as well okay so let's talk about your shoes currently i'm in classic pro 90s freeze and i get them special ordered the side cut down and actually i have the vamp cut down just a little bit um and then classic pro 90s already come three quartered but i I really like that part of them. You can see that there's not a lot of fabric right here. So she cuts that part down, and that's mainly to show off your feet a little bit more so that there is your foot is not like being swallowed up by the shoe. And I do have a super, super low profile. Yes. So it's important. So low profile means that, you know, you have a skinnier foot. There's like you're lower up to the ground and there's not a lot of fat on your foot. So if you have a lower profile foot, you generally want something that is a little bit lower, both in the fabric and in the box. So that's something that you should know about yourself. Okay, so you're currently in the Classic Pro 90. Whenever you see the word pro, that generally means that it's three-quartered already. So it looks like a full shank, but it's actually much softer right here. So um, they also have Studio Pro, that also means three-quarter. So whenever you see the word pro, that's what it means. Um, so even though these already come three-quartered, she does much more to them to make it even more soft in the back quarter of the shoe. The first thing I do when I um, start breaking in or sewing a new pair of shoes is I just bend them right at the arch. And then I will um, I'll step on the box. And then after I do that, I usually kind of try both pairs on and just kind of figure out which one looks like it's going to be a left one and which one looks like it's going to be a right one. Um, but I don't decide that until after I darn them. Okay. But I just like to get an idea so that when I'm darning, I can have that in the back of my mind. I start by darning. And I like to use um, not the thinnest darning thread, but like a medium one, mm -hmm. especially the, for that first layer, um, just so that I can kind of start to build up and it takes a little bit less time. Yes. So do you, do you go around it a couple times then? I usually do four layers around to start, and I continually add layers as I'm using it. Yes. So, depending on what I need. Yeah. So it's not just ballet, it's arts and crafts. Like, you <laughs> need to know how to do all of this. <laughs> it's really easy to just get through the satin. So I try to really make sure I'm getting through a bit of the canvas as well, um, so that my darning doesn't end up uh, falling off at yes. some point when it starts to get worn. And then I start, um, I do my normal loop stitch, but I just add a little bit of extra loops. That kind of helps, it just helps with time. There's, um, there's a lot of different ways to darn your point shoes, but Emily is actually going around the loop, or going around the needle twice to, to knot it. And I think it's a little bit more secure, right? Yeah, yeah. it does, it, it kind of, it, builds up like more where you need it, right around the box, and then it also, exactly, it's adding that extra knot so that it doesn't come out. Exactly. Yeah, so I do that like at least twice around. Um, sometimes on the front of the box, depends. Um, sometimes I don't do the double stitch because that part doesn't tend to get as worn down. And so oftentimes, um, I need to add extra layers in the back, and sometimes I'll do that, sometimes I won't. Kind of just depends on, if, if I'm not doing a bunch of balancing or turning, I won't. But if I need to balance and turn, I kind of do it a little bit more even. So you fall backwards, not forward. Um, yes. Okay. So I like, yeah, I mean, if, if that, if I add that extra stitch in the back, 
might come a little bit further over my shoe. Yes. We yes. actually that edge to kind of push you over a little bit. So this is very different for a lot of people. So I have some ballerinas that will not darn the bottom at all and just darn the top portion of it. And this dancer falls forward. And Emily, she makes it a little bit more um, reinforced to the bottom of the platform because she falls back. So everybody falls in a different place. Preferably not laterally, but if a lot of dancers will either fall forward or will fall back. And like you kind of have to figure out like what your tendency is because everybody kind of does it a different way depending on what your ankles and your feet and your legs look like. So there's a so you just have to figure out which way you need to darn more or if you need to reinforce it in one part or another. So Emily reinforces it at the bottom so that she can balance better, so she can stay on her toes a little bit easier. And it also kind of tilts the point shoes a tiny bit, so it pushes her forward a little bit more. So it kind of makes her feet look a little bit prettier too. And with freeze, um, they're handmade, so they're not always perfectly symmetrical. And so, which kind of works out, sometimes you have a really good shoe for a left foot or, you know, um, but sometimes the darning kind of emphasizes that, makes it a little bit more obvious. Yes. So I like to wait until I've done them uh -huh. to decide. And then once I um, do that, one of the other things that I do is I use an X-Acto knife. And one of my teachers actually taught me this. Um, and I shave down the side of my shoe. So um, actually usually what I do first is I ch check and decide where my arch is going to be. So especially for me because I do it a little differently on each foot. So I would check, and this one, this foot generally is right where that seat is. So actually, I know now that that's usually where that is, but... So your right foot. For my right foot, it's exactly where the seat is, most of the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I just take and I make a line, and I do another one, and I just I kind of like go ahead and slit the shape there. And there's like a little piece that you can pull out. That width is different depending on what foot she's, she's skiving for. Yeah. So I start pretty small, and then sometimes I do make it wider. Mm -hmm. um, or on my left foot, I make it probably twice that size, just because my foot's a little different on that side. Then the next thing I do is I just go on the side here, and I shave off the edge. That way I don't really have that feeling of this shape underneath my foot. And it just kind of helps uh, with stability. And I do feel like I can articulate a little bit better as well. Definitely. Um, and so I just, I do that all the way around my shoe. If you are not on point yet, and if you put on your very first pair of point shoes, you're gonna notice that you're not completely flat on the floor like you are with your ballet slippers because this part right here, this shank, is quite thick. It's about this thick. So you're actually lifted in the middle of your foot. So a lot of dancers actually shave off the sides so they feel a little bit more stable. Um, and the harder the shoe is, especially for freeze, the thicker the shank becomes. So if you have a double shank or a hard shank, um, a Fortiflex, whatever it may be, um, you're gonna be higher and higher off the floor. So this is a really good trick if you have trouble um, getting, if you're doing, if you're trying to balance on flat and if you're having a lot of trouble, this is a really great hack. But also, if you're using an X-Acto knife, definitely have your parents help you yes. because you don't want to chop off I, your fingers. I have actually sliced my finger right before a show before. Oh my gosh, see? So yeah, you have to be really, really yes. careful. Even after like hundreds of pairs that she has done, she still can get in trouble with that. So definitely have somebody help you with that. I know some other dancers that either jet glue their shoes differently or they prepare their shoes a little bit differently because they know that one does a certain thing and the other does another thing. Um, so this is her left and her right. You can see that she only takes out like a little sliver for her right foot and a much bigger sliver for her left. So this is something that you want to consider if you know that your arch breaks differently. And the whole point is that you want to make it as even as possible so you're not leaning on one side or one leg isn't higher than the other. So try to make it as even as possible. But it's really great to pay attention to how you balance, how your foot breaks, all of those things. To review, you 
the customization that she already has is to cut down the sides. A lot of dancers have this, and it's a lower vamp, slightly wider U, and um, this is a Pro 90, so that means that it's 90 degrees here, pretty flat, and then it's a three-quarter shank already, but after she gets her brand new shoe, she breaks the shank, she steps on the box, and then darns her point shoes, reinforcing it at the bottom if she needs to balance it a little bit more. And then um, you cut out the little sliver, depending on which foot it's going to be on. So um, is there anything else that you do to your shoes? So that's what I do in preparation. Um, and I usually just do those things. Uh -huh. But then occasionally I'll have a pair that I really like and they've dyed a little bit too much or the U was slightly wider on that pair. Sure. And so if I get a pair like that, then I will take some darning thread and I will just um, basically re-raise the vamp. Yes. Um, it doesn't usually happen to new pairs, but sometimes when they're a little bit more dead, I need that yeah. extra support. Yes. Um, it's getting wider and wider, right? Yes. And I do like to make sure that where my metatarsal, metatarsals are, it's super, super soft. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I do this just to kind of keep me feeling pulled up in the shoe. And it just it's just a little extra support. Mm -hmm. And if you are the type of dancer that needs a longer vamp, this is really great for you because if you're not going to custom order a shoe, which for customs, it could take like eight to 12 weeks to get and your feet might grow before then. So you can just customize with with your, with your darning thread or with your regular sewing thread and then kind of sew the vamp right here so you're raising the vamp. So this is usually for dancers that have either longer toes or if you feel like you're falling out of your shoes, you're falling forward, then you can have a little bit extra support in the front so that you can have um, a longer vamp. Well, thank you so much for showing us your point shoe hacks. Of course, yeah, I'm so glad I could share. Thanks for chatting with me today. Yeah, absolutely. Could you put on a pair of point shoes for me? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see what they look like on her. If you guys have any questions about your point shoes or anything else, you can leave that on the comments and then I will try to get to you and answer that in my next video. Um, I'm going to be heading to Aspen Santa Fe tomorrow, so you guys will see more videos from there. See you guys later.